<clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Monday morning here at the Church Town Church of God. Just a quick check in. Things are are up and running already today. You can see that I'm late. This is my week already as we head into Monday morning. So, no, it's all good. There's just uh, things. You know, you wake up and there are things to do. Things that are happening. Things that occur. And so we had to take care of some things this morning. And now I'm here. And then we'll get back over to the house. And we will continue. Good morning, Jennifer. Thank you. They are beautiful windows. 40% of our wall space is single pane stained glass, which is one of the heating nightmares that we have here. So they're beautiful windows and we pay for them every year, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, sometimes as the pastor, I have, that's what I see. Uh, I see beautiful windows as well, don't worry. Um, and we did, we had um, a company create custom-made storm windows for them on the outside, which not only protects and preserves them, but um, provides for an insulation value as well. So that some of that problem, so to speak, is taken away as well. But before those um, storm windows were on, it was kind of like preaching in a tent. On a cold winter's day with the wind blowing, you would feel the movement of the air. So <laughs> it was something that needed to be done. But yeah, so thank you. Come and see them sometime. They're really awesome. Um, and like I said, when the church is open, just come on in and check them out. Uh, there's a story behind each and every one of them. And then the names of the people who helped to provide them are at the bottom of the windows. And there was a time two years ago when I preached through the windows, the different um, theological and liturgical symbols that are on the windows. I preached through them to see if anybody would see that I'm preaching through all of the, the different windows. So that was pretty cool. <clears throat> so yeah, that's it. It was an incredible weekend, incredible. Um, my trips over the mountain to Perry County went great. The wedding was fantastic and awesome and wonderful. On Saturday, got everything prepared Saturday night. Sunday was just amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, we were here this morning, <clears throat> are here in the morning for a long time and just enjoying, worshiping and singing and just, it, it was fantastic. So uh, then we had a great lunch with family yesterday. You know the drill. It was great. So busy, fantastic, wonderful weekend. I sat down then after a nice rest and got started on this coming weekend last night. So I'm getting a little bit ahead of the game. And we've got a busy week ahead, so we're looking forward to that as well. So I just wanted to check in and say good morning to all of you. Say thank you to all of you for your love, your support, your prayers. Um, everything is just moving forward wonderfully. And that's about it. That's about it. I hope you're having a happy Monday, a healthy week. I hope that the love and the peace and the joy and the hope of Advent is shining through as the generated it's all generated by the love that we have for Jesus Christ right the cornerstone of that the generator of that is our salvation and that's what we keep on preaching here and um, that I believe is what makes a difference in your life when one person looks at another person and says that person is joyful and they have no reason to be yeah they do they're saved they're a son or a daughter of the Most High God. And that is a wonderful reason to be joyful. So <clears throat> that's what we're talking about, my brothers and sisters. Yesterday we talked a little bit um, also about when we talked about the joy of the coming, we talked about the three advents, right? Three advents. The, we, we talked about advent in the coming of the Christ child. That is God incarnate. Christmas, it's what we traditionally call Christmas. And we traditionally focus Advent around Christmas. Uh, we also talk about the Advent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, the arrival, the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And that is the current age in which we live. 
the age of church, the age of Holy Spirit, the age of what is spoken about throughout the New Testament of the um, um, indwelling of Holy Spirit and the creation of what we call church. And that's the age in which we live. So we've experienced the advent of the Christ child. We've, you know, we've experienced the incarnation of God made flesh. We've experienced the advent of Holy Spirit and the creation of you know, God on earth now in us, through us, ministering and living in us. We often say we are his eyes, we are his hands, uh, that sort of thing. And then we talked about the advent of Christ coming again. So we have three. Uh, and we, we need to pause during the Advent season and recognize that it's a, it isn't extended. It's a larger celebration as we open our uh, hearts and our minds and our thinking to the actual process of Advent, the actual concept of Advent in the way that the Lord himself has employed it. He's never designated it as such, but we see these advents in scripture, the Christ child, the Holy Spirit, and Christ again. Um, and when we look at the bookends of that, <clears throat> we can begin to break things down, right? Do we look at the bookends of that? Coming as a human being, susceptible to human things and to human stuff and human emotions and human everything, human weaknesses, making himself susceptible allowing himself to be beaten and tortured and murdered and that sort. I mean, it's unbelievable. The second coming, no. <laughs> the second coming as we read, no. That's, that's not the way that Christ is coming. He's coming in glory, right? First advent, he came from glory to humanity. The um, second advent of Christ, right? The second advent of Christ He's coming from glory in his glory to demonstrate his glory. And we will experience that as well. So we checked in with that and we sang the song, Joy to the World, The Lord Has Come, which is a, which is a second coming song. It's a second coming song. We, we sing it quite often re relative to Christmas because it's about the advent of Christ, but it's, a, it's about the advent of Christ coming in his glory. So we talked a little bit about that as well. And we sang that song. It was fun. <clears throat> fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Oh, so, well, I don't know. What did you do? Revelation 21, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth has disappeared. And the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And that's what we we're talking about, right? Amen. Good morning, Bill. Like I said, just checking in this morning. So let's hear from you. We're one week away from the blessed celebration. And so we're looking forward to that as well. I don't know what your church is doing. I hope that they are having church Sunday morning and Sunday evening. Um, if not, we are. We'll be here all the time. So we'll be here throughout the day. No, uh, we'll be here Sunday morning and Sunday evening. Sunday morning at 10, Sunday evening at 7 with the two services prepared. So uh, we're, I'm really looking forward to both, to next Sunday. It's just going to be an amazing Sunday. So really looking forward to that. Then the following Sunday, New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve, we have a wedding in the church at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So that's going to be wonderful as well. So I know several people who have gotten married around the Christmas time and around uh, New Year's and New Year's Eve is, is uh, I think I know one or two couples that are married in New Year's Eve. I'll know two for sure now. So anyway, that's all I've got for you, brothers and sisters. What have you got? Join the conversation. Join the conversation. Andrew, Jennifer, Kim, Pagan, Liz, Henry. Bill, trying to focus on the important and not the trivial. Oh, big time. You know, that's, again, that's...
The trivial is coming with it. Uh, if you're talking about the Christmas season, the trivial is there. It's going to present itself. It'll be at your fingertips however and whenever you choose. Um, you really don't have to go digging for the trivial. But we do have to be very in, intentional about the non-trivial, don't we? We do have to be very intentional about looking in Scripture and understanding Advent, about looking in Scripture and understanding the significance of the incarnate God. We have to be very intentional about understanding that we're not celebrating anything except the incarnation of God. No, we don't know when it was. We don't know where. Or we don't know all of those details that everybody loves to dig up, the manger and in. Was it a, what all these different things. Um, that's the trivial. The important is that what God did as he began this, it is the penultimate event to the cross, right? The incarnation of God is the penultimate event to the cross. And, and this is the initiate of the cross. Good morning, Valerie. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Yep, same. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Same. Same. And I've had that question asked a lot because folks are raised Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Uh, same word, same meaning, same person. Same reference, same everything. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Ghost, come. Um, I've always known Holy Spirit. And so I generally say Holy Spirit. Um, that's all I've known. And that's all, you know, so it's not like there's, there's camps, you know, like Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. There are different people. And we're going to fight for who they are. No, it's just different words. Just different words. And I've not known any other words than Holy Spirit. So that's, that's all that is. I'm on a stool today instead of a chair. You gate your phone. Good. I'm glad you gate your phone. Are you trying to say you ate your phone, Val? Or you got your phone, Val? I'm not quite sure. Or you left your phone in a gate, Val? What, what is it? What are you trying to say? So, But yeah, and you'll still, depending on, again, how people are, Brought up and generally speaking, what they've heard um, as youngsters growing up, that's what they'll be referenced. But the reference is exactly the same. The three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So there's no difference in reference point there. You hate your phone. Oh, I didn't even go there. I was thinking you ate it, you left it at a gate, or you got it, but you hate your phone. Okay. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Hate, hate. Oh, now Valerie's getting fired up. Hate, hate, hate my phone. I'm sorry, Val. I wish you could love your phone. It's important. No, it's not. I mean, your phone is important, but the love or the hate that you have for it isn't so much so. Oh, yes. So there we are. There we are. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. That's what Jesus says. I have begun it, and I have ended it. And when we talk about that context from Revelation, we talk about the idea that Jesus Christ, nothing has been created that has not been created through him. So we go all the way back to the beginning as we see it, the beginning in our human thinking. The beginning. We can talk about well, it's Christmas season as well. I am the beginning and the end. We talked about the penultimate event, the event really, truly preceding uh, the cross. We have the incarnation and we have the cross. We have the crucifixion. Um, he is the beginning. He is the baby. He is the end. He is the resurrected Lord coming in glory. I mean, there's just so many different ways that you can enjoy uh, the words of Scripture. And as you just sit and think, and of the process, of, the, of what was done here for us, pretty neat, pretty neat. All right. Hi, Nancy. Um, tomorrow morning, one reason I wanted to make sure I checked in this morning is because tomorrow morning, I don't think I will be able to. Uh, I have a knee appointment at 8 in the morning. So I'm going to be one of the first people that he sees. So 
Um, I will have more information about my knee after that, which I want. Are we going to maintain the status quo and just press on with all of this and see how it goes? Or are we going to be more aggressive and go in and fix the knee replacement and try to get it operating the way it should? Um, if so, then when? Sooner the better? Or do I just wait and just deal with it for a while? So we'll talk about all of that tomorrow. He's a good doctor and he's um, always willing to talk. So, and we'll talk through the options and stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, it'll be fine. I, like I said, I'm not, no stress at all. Tim's coming home tomorrow evening. Oh, yay. All right. All right. So Tim is coming home tomorrow evening after a doctor's appointment. And he is doing well as his back is in full recovery. And we're praying for complete and total and full recovery. Complete and total what the doctor promised. 85, 90% reduction in pain and healing. Healing and mobility. Here he's getting better. I hope my little horse, my nunuk hurts. Not much of a Christmas here. He's getting better. Well, no, your doggy's going to be okay, Valerie. He'll be okay. He'll be okay. He'll be okay. You know, your Christmas will be fine. We're looking forward to Christmas with our two old dogs. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you can literally see at this point in time every day trying to get them up out of bed, get them outside. And they're, you know, like there's just, it's like a clock. That is just winding down, and they're they're hilarious, but we do know that um, they're moving awfully slowly, and so we're enjoying every moment. We're spoiling them like crazy, and uh, we're gonna enjoy Christmas with them and that sort of thing. So they're uh, they're you know they're family. What can you say? It's been fourteen, almost fifteen years with these guys, and uh, it's been awesome. They've they've helped raise our children. So, and I know that um, my daughter-in-law really wants um, my granddaughter, you know, to meet the dogs, you know, before they, before they pass on. So she's like, no, 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 you have to stay around. You're going to meet Mackenzie <laughs> and that sort of thing. So it's pretty cool. Oh, it'll be, yeah, I, I'm not going to mess with it, but I, I'm not, it's not anything that is. Like, oh my goodness, it's the size of five grapefruits and I've got to get this. So, it, it is what it is. So, no big deal. Uh, yeah, well, like I said, um, we, that's what we've been talking about here at Churchtown. The first couple of weeks of Advent, we opened ourselves up and we missed the people. And we allowed ourselves to miss and we allowed ourselves to talk about it. We allowed ourselves to, to talk about how we're coping, how we're dealing. We allowed a lot of the uh, things of the year to, the tragic parts of the year to be brought up. And uh, I thought that it was extremely necessary. We've had quite a year, you know, with four passings here in the congregation. And then uh, last week we looked at the other side of the coin marriages and proposals and babies born and babies created and weddings coming up uh, that last weekend, next weekend, and all kinds of different things happening. Um, new friends have joined us here in the congregation that have just brought light and life and energy and, you know, all the, we can't ignore that either. So we're singing and we're celebrating and we're enjoying as well. So, yep, you know, it's all of the above, right? It's all of the above. It's all of the above. So, well, <clears throat> thank you all very much. I appreciate it. And we probably will not see you again until Wednesday. Wednesday morning word is in session at 930. <clears throat> Excuse me, this Wednesday morning. I don't know what we're looking at yet, but I'll have a better understanding of that after today. So just let's pray. Father God, thank you for the gathering this morning. I pray that we understand your, your decisions to come as a human, to provide us with the Holy Spirit. And we look forward to you coming again. 
to claim in your glory your creation. Wow, as we exist here as a church, Father God, let us do what you will, not what we will. Help us to understand your will. Help us to accept your will, be okay with your will, and understand that it is your will, not ours. So that when you do come again, you reach out your hand and we take it. Oh, yeah. In Jesus' name, for all my brothers and sisters, I pray thank you. I pray that their hearts and minds are open as we just enjoy and celebrate the incarnation of God on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kiddos, um, I love you. I'll check in with you on Wednesday. And, um, you know, go make the world a better place. One conversation at a time.